In today's video, we are going to be talking about how you would go about healing a difficulty 10 Garden of Genesis, uh, specifically with the mutations Eternal, Savage, and Frenzied. Now, this is a new sort of video series idea that I want to go through, where basically every week we have these new mutations. So this week, Garden of Genesis with Void, and we have Tempest Heart with Fire. And I kind of want to do like a running commentary for you guys where we go in. Uh, so we, we have this pre-recorded footage here and uh, we're going to play through the video and I'm going to be talking about what I'm doing at each particular moment in the dungeon. So as we go in, why we're using certain abilities um, and so on and so forth and how to play around certain boss mechanics. So for this particular run, I decided to go with the classic all AoE healing build. This is probably going to be a build that you guys are using a lot as a, a healer in um, difficulty 10 dungeons is, as it's pretty common that you will have melee players. Like when we we go into these groups here we find a group uh, probably most of these players uh, 5 to 50 con like DPS good gears probably most people want to have just like all melee DPS so great swords hatchets great axes spears uh, and that's pretty good as uh, for this particular build because you can just drop all your heals on the ground in the same area like so and it hits everybody because they're all stacked up because they're all in melee range now, one thing that is a little bit different about this particular run is I decided to not go for the Void Blade. Instead, we went with Oblivion, Orb of Decay, and Essence Rupture. I'm sure we're probably going to get some flack for this. People say that you're not like playing it properly if you don't go with Void Blade. But I just find Garden of Genesis actually to be pretty damn difficult after the changes that they made where uh, Fortify is no longer damage reduction, but it's an armor increase. Everybody's getting hit really hard. We had a bunch of like 5 to 50 con players in this dungeon, so I opted to go for a bigger focus on healing with this particular build. And uh, we'll just run through the pieces of gear that we got here real quick so obviously it's a void mutation so you need to take your void damage absorption gems in here so we got amethyst and all of our armor we have nullifying oblivion which can be useful for certain enemies and we'll talk about uh, which enemies you can use nullifying oblivion on we also have voracious blade ignore that <laughs> it's not going to do anything this time uh, fortifying sacred ground We've got the Siren's Thigh Guards. Uh, elemental Aversion is pretty good as well. It helps a lot uh, to uh, absorb some of the elemental damage you take. And then Keen Beacon is also another perk that I like running pretty often as well. The Amulet here, Health and Void Protection. The Ring has got Hearty Sacred Siphoning. Earring, we have Evasive here, very important. Refreshing Toast, Healthy Toast. The Void Gauntlet that I'm using here has refreshing rupture i think this perk's pretty awesome because you can like basically apply it to like two or three different enemies at the same time the cooldown is like always available uh, when you land rupture on something it, it reduces the cooldown by 50 percent and then we're using a blessed refreshing move and mending protection life staff you could uh, supplement or, or replace this life staff with cleric's walking staff from the new dungeon empyrean forge it's basically the same thing. Uh, stone form rune is what I use in most of my expeditions these days. Again, if we pull aggro from the mobs, we can just activate the stone form. Keeps me safe. And uh, real quick look at the weapon mastery here. So we can't pick up divine blessing because we have uh, too many points over on the right hand side of the tree. I, I did opt to go for speed of light actually because I, I feel there's a lot of points in God of Genesis where you're just running from A to B. So we, we went for that there. With the void gauntlet, again, you guys already saw this, but no void blade. Uh, we actually don't take this point here as well because they really nerfed Invigorated Oblivion, but Orb of Decay for some healing, Essence Rupture for some healing, and then Oblivion for the damage buff. And of course, we've got Blast on the Void Gauntlet as well. It's not necessary, but it can increase the healing a little bit. Other consumables we use in this run include a food buff. So we pop the uh, Smoked Rib Cap Cabbage and Barley Soup. There's also an another one as well that's Bear Flank or something like that. Basically, Constitution and Focus are Focus and Constitution. That puts my stats to this. Now, this is, again, not perfect. It's a bit janky. We don't really need these points in Intelligence because we're not using the Void Blade. Um, if you were going to go Void Blade, then you probably go 50 Intelligence, maybe 100 if you're feeling quite confident. I took 140 Constitution just so we don't get one shot because sometimes the mobs hit really, really hard in Genesis and then we get a big chunk in focus here so we can do some pretty awesome healing. The other consumables we were using are Desert Sunrise. We also use Energizing Hearty Meal for some mana regen. Uh, of course, we've got the, the Trifactor of Potions here, Infused Health, Infused Mana, Infused Regen. I was using Angry Earth Ward Potions. I also popped a um, infused Angry Earth coating on my Life Staff because we actually spend more time attacking with the Life Staff. I didn't really bother with one in the Void Gauntlet because we're just using the abilities and then switching back. Uh, we did a Honing Stone to increase our weapon damage uh, on both weapons. And then the final thing I popped was... I don't think there is anything, actually. I think that does cover everything. And I also have trophies down as well, but I think this is maybe overkill for a healer, especially if you're not going to be running Void Blade. But yeah, we do have the um, trophies for extra damage to the Ancient uh, Angry Earth. Apart from in Brimstone, I need to go fix that. 
All right, let's jump into the run and uh, we'll take a look at actually, you know, what we were doing in there. All right, so here we are. We've just popped the food buff. Um, what I like to do is pop all the protection on everybody before we actually start the dungeon. All the protection applies a 10% fortify, which is nowhere near as good as it used to be, but it's still um, the heal portion of all the protection only lasts 10 seconds, but the damage reduction lasts for 20 seconds. So you can pop it and the heal will fall off at about this point, which is good because if we're healing the tank as they're running through, we'll pull aggro. Uh, we go in with an intensify here. We do the dodge for the bend light and then we immediately put sacred ground down. You want to get sacred ground down like very early on in the fight. It's not a heal that you want to leave for a long amount of time. And then at this point, we're just cycling through our abilities. We, we see that we have aggro of the mob there. So I'm just dodging left and right. Uh, we're going to drink a mana potion because my mana gets pretty low. Effectively though, from what you guys can see here, we are just dodge, uh, do a heavy attack to get intensify, and we'll really quickly break this one down here as well. Um, if we open up my uh, in-game menu here, like where I actually still got the game open, intensify is this one over here. So when you land a heavy attack, you increase your healing by 10%, and then we have another one over here. It says when you dodge, you increase your healing by 20%. So we get 30% stronger healing just by frequently trying to dodge roll. So dodge roll every five seconds, and then we're also trying to land a heavy attack to increase our healing. And now if you can, you go for two or three heavy attacks, but if you get three heavy attacks out and then the tank's already dead because you didn't put the sacred ground down fast enough, it's just, you know, it is what it is. So I usually just go for a dodge and then a heavy attack. Uh, a lot of this run and, and the way you're going to see, it does kind of rely on the DPS to know what they're doing. If they just stand there and get hit by the boss, it's not your fault. So again, we're going to go for the heavy attack here. We go for the dodge. We're going for two heavy attacks because I'm feeling ballsy. And then there's the sacred ground. We put the essence rupture on the boss. We put the uh, orb of decay, pop the heal on the way back. Oblivion down, then I'm switching back to the life staff because every time we land a light or heavy attack with the life staff, we activate refreshing move and also revitalize, which lowers our cooldowns. So effectively throughout the fight, I'm just rotating through my abilities on both of my weapons. When I have some downtime or like when all of my abilities are on cooldown, we switch back to the life staff and we just keep on left clicking. And I, I usually just do light attacks because you can get more light attacks more, more frequently. But effectively, all I'm trying to do here is just maintain like permanent ability uh, uptime. So, you know, Sacred Ground is down as much as possible. Orb is going out as much as possible. Beacon is going out as much as possible. Essence Rupture is always on the mob. Oblivion is down on the ground. The ideal rotation when you get into a fight, if you can, and I often fail this, I flub it because I'm bad, but ideally you want to hit them with Essence Rupture, then put Oblivion down, and then fire Orb of Decay out, because Orb can crit. And when the Orb of Decay crits, it hits the enemies on the way back. Um, it, it, when you crit, you lower your cooldown. Uh, so you can see we popped it there. You see that huge cooldown. We're going to go back and uh, just highlight that real quick there because I actually managed to do the rotation properly. So there's Orb of Decay. Then we put the Fortifying Sacred Ground down. Uh, then, sorry, Orb of Protection. Then the Fortifying Sacred Ground. We put the Essence Rupture and then immediately we get, apply, um, we get our cooldown reduction there because we have a Refreshing Rupture. We put Oblivion down and then look at the cooldown on this Oblivion here. It goes from 15 seconds. We hit all of those mobs. We get a couple of crits in there and it like drops the Oblivion cooldown in half and Essence Rupture is available to go again so we can apply it on another mob if we want to. So just a really heavy emphasis on healing here, trying to keep everybody's health bars as full as possible uh, because again, Garden of Genesis is pretty damn spooky. Uh, speaking of spooky, this this is also a pretty spooky pull here as well. Um, so there's a couple things we did there, and I, you know, because the fight is so fast, I thought about doing this live if you guys can believe it, but there's, <laughs> there's no way we do need to pause it. We are popping um, potions here sometimes on pulls as well. So we've used our Angry Earth Ward potion here to reduce incoming damage. Uh, we've also got our Regen potion, which we'll frequently use in fights as well. Now we do have Stone Form available here, and I do like to have Stone Form available for this one because you find that you pull aggro of a lot of mobs. So we'll try and break this down one uh, a little bit at a time. Sacred Ground down immediately, Orb of Decay, uh, Orb of Protection rather, I keep calling it the wrong thing. Um, and you can see we've immediately pulled aggro of several mobs here, so I'm going to pop the Stone Form straight away. Um, I'm down to half HP as well, so I, hopefully I'm going to use a, a Health Potion here because we kind of need one. Uh, no, we're just focusing on healing. Uh, clearly pretty confident that we're going to get this one. Um, but yeah, the, the whole emphasis here, and it's kind of hard to take away because there's so much going on in the middle. We are just left clicking, left clicking, left clicking. As soon as the heal is available, we'll try and go for a heavy attack and a dodge roll if we can. But we want to make sure that we keep those AOE heals down in that big mess of players and mobs. Uh, because it's just chaos in there. Uh, and you've got to try and pay attention to what the mob is doing at the same time as well. If he lifts his staff up and bashes it down, uh, you're going to get knocked back. And then that's like some downtime where you can't be healing. Of course, Stone Farm does help in that situation though. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty messy pull. 
Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, like some of this is able to like actually go through and show use to you guys. Uh, but the use of stone form there uh, by constantly trying to maintain dodges as well. Like there's there's several things that you have to be aware of at the same time. Looking at cooldowns, but also trying to like not be too close to mobs, and then realizing when you do have aggro of the mobs. Uh, what cooldowns do I have available? Do I have a health potion? Do I have a mana potion with healthy toast? Do I have the regen potion? Do I have my infused ward potion? Do I have my heart gem rune? Uh, there's several things you can go for here. Typically, with the runs that I do, the tank and, and you always like take the mobs over on the left-hand side here first. So I like to put the sacred ground down like ahead of time. And uh, what I usually find is you, you spend a little bit of time fighting over here on the left-hand side. And then the fight moves to the other side of the tree. So... We're just constantly, again, trying to make sure that all of my AoE heals down are in the, you know, the mess of players here. And now you can see the fight is moving over to the right side here. we got the soldier. Um, I do whiff the sacred ground down there. So what I'm using, by the way, uh, it's probably worth to mention here. We do have our targeted healing setup. So we'll actually go into the game real quick here. Um, and I'll, I'll show you guys my settings that we have for heals. So key binds, we have uh, target group member one, two, three, four, five. Um, and then toggle group mode as well. So I'm actually using target group member number four. That is my tank, which is mouse button number four. So I've actually got a button on the side of my mouse that I'm pressing. So I like to press sacred ground and then press the corresponding button. So we'd press Q um, and then we would press the mouse button and it would target the group member number four, which is my tank and cast it on them. So I'm using targeted healing and selecting my tank almost every time for sacred ground. But sometimes this can go wrong because your tank is not in with the melee. In this case, the tank is actually over here on the right. So sometimes it is actually worth uh, an another strategy that you can do is when you're casting the heal and you have your sacred ground ready to go, you can press middle mouse button and that will unlock the targeted aspect of the heal and then you can place it where you want. So normally, you know, with targeted healing, which I do recommend you play with, although with this build, you, you might not want to go for it. Um, you can middle mouse button, and then it unlocks the heal and you can actually just place it on the melee and that would have been a better strategy for me to do that so we did uh waste the sacred ground but it still kind of ends up being in the fight just about uh, maybe I'm, I'm trying to justify it yeah it's a pretty bad sacred ground placement and that's that's like a heal that you do not want to whiff because uh it's so important to have that down on your melee all the time it increases all the healing by 50 percent it gives the fortifying sacred ground it's a it's a very powerful heal and uh we took a quite a bit of damage there as a result of, of flubbing that heal there Last couple waves coming in here again. We just preemptively getting uh, all of our heals down where we can. Sometimes I do like to save the uh, orb of protection here for when I expect my team to take damage. So I don't know if this was like a perfect example of it here, but we'll try and just like describe what's going on. Um, I know that these particular mobs that we're coming up against here, these um, soldiers, um, video is just not playing. There we go. Uh, these soldiers here do a, like an overhead smash where they slam down into the ground and do a ton of damage to everybody at the same time. So what you can do sometimes is save your orb of protection for when you know that damage spike is coming. And then you can immediately take advantage of mending protection. So the mending protection perk, which we have on the life staff here, it says... 42% healing power for three seconds if all the protection heals an ally under 50%. So if you heal somebody who is under 50%, which they will be after they get hit by that smash, uh, you're going to increase every heal that you do after that for three seconds, but it constantly keeps reapplying. So you basically just get a massive spike in outgoing healing uh, if you can activate the orb on low HP targets. So we might try and pull this off here. I'm not actually sure. Um, sometimes, no, we, did, we just fired that one in there, but... It can be a strategy worthwhile. It's something that's usually in the back of my brain, but there's honestly, you can see there's so much going on here that, that we have to react to that it's a strategy that you want to try and like bear in mind uh, because obviously the, the Fortify from Over Protection, which is what you want to maintain, lasts for 20 seconds and the cooldown is often like it feels like it's 8 seconds. So there's like a 12 second window where you technically don't need to reapply Orb, so you could hold on to it um, if you don't need it for its healing. Again, we're just cycling through our abilities here. I'm holding my Oblivion because I'm waiting for this soldier to apply a Fortify to himself. So these soldiers are the reason why we have Nullifying Oblivion. Um, because it strips away the Fortify, they get the shield icon, and then you can strip it away. But he didn't use it there because you're just getting chain CC'd. Now, at this point of the run, uh, one thing that you may not realize is it's very important to hug the right-hand side of the wall. So if you go too far over to the left there, you will pull a bunch of mobs uh, towards you. So if you want to, like, save face and look, you know, cool and look like you know what you're doing, uh, typically, a lot of groups that you do, uh, they, they hug the right-hand side of the wall. Um, but again, we're just cycling through our abilities here. We get sacred ground down as soon as we can. We go into the beacon. Uh, the orb is sometimes coming out like before beacon. I ideally, you want to like save, uh, use like orb earlier on because then it's the damage reduction and beacon is the heal that you want to use last. But 
I, you know, I try to respect my own rules when it comes to this, but it doesn't always happen. Uh, but effectively, you guys can see that there's nothing like particularly crazy about this. It's just making sure that you get the all of your abilities out as fast as possible, and then cycling back to the life staff and just tapping away on that uh, left mouse button. So again, we go for the dodge roll, we go for the intensify, put the sacred ground down, put the beacon down. Don't even go for the orb here because I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, we're, we're styling on the enemies. Uh, we put the essence rupture down, the orb of decay is going out, the oblivion is out, and then I'm just positioning myself back away uh, because that's the direction we're going to be going. And uh, also sometimes you want to be careful about your positioning with the way that the tank is facing and the way that you are facing. Obviously, if you stand right next to the tank, everything that hits the tank is going to also hit you. So trying to be aware of your positioning as a healer, it probably goes without saying, but it is uh, an important factor. So first boss here. The Greenskeeper, or the Caretaker rather, he's a pretty spooky one and we'll talk about some particular strategies that we run when it comes in here. Uh, but for now, it's again, there's the uh, there's the Sacred Ground, there's the Beacon, there's the Orb, then we cycle through the Void Gauntlet abilities. I also like to do here as well, and, and it might be worth uh, mentioning, when I switch over to my Void Gauntlet, you'll see my mana is going down here because we have to go through a lot of abilities. Like we're down to 61, we use Orb, we go down to 52, we use Oblivion, we go down to 24. Now what I do before I switch over to the Life Staff is I just tap right mouse button once. Because when you tap right mouse button with the uh, Void Gauntlet, you can convert your uh, mana or health into mana. So if we just, again, we'll just go through the rotation real quick here. Just use all of the stuff that I would be doing. And that one, and then this one, and then I tap right mouse button and we turn a big chunk of health, well, not actually, a small chunk of health into mana. So I try to just weave those in occasionally. So if you're wondering, like, how is your mana coming back so much, Baggins? Just whenever you switch over to the Void Gauntlet, use abilities. Before you switch back, just do a cheeky cheeky right mouse button and then switch back to the Life Staff. And that, that's we're going to be doing that frequently throughout um, as a way to sort of maintain our mana. But we all will also be definitely using mana potions as well. So it's coming up to the first part of the fight here where there's like a phase, uh, you know, something actually changes here. So there's two steps that you can do here, and it's kind of important to know with your group. So you have all in, or you have all out, basically. So if you're going all in, everybody stays in, and you just do DPS. Now, this can be quite a bit of a butt clencher, and it is going to uh, like give you a few more responsibilities as a healer. But all in is, is a faster way to do it, but it's also a more risky way. Where if you go all out, the tank just stays in. Um, and the tank starts hitting the, the mob and he just has to sort of dodge and, and, and use his cooldowns. Uh, and you can also use Sacred Ground on the tank as well. So we're not going to see it here. Uh, but with targeted healing, I find that you press Sacred Ground and then you press the button to select your party member who is the tank and it actually places it through the wall. Some people say that they have uh, difficulty doing this, but with the targeted healing system and then using the keybind to select the party member that is your tank, you can actually place Sacred Ground even when you're on the other side of the wall. So if you're in a run where you're not doing the all-in strat, uh, instead you're out with your DPS, what I would be doing here is using Beacon and Orb and Orb of Decay on my DPS and then trying to use Sacred Ground on cooldown to apply it to my tank through the wall until uh, we get to get back into the arena. But obviously we're going for the all-in strat here. So at this point it's just dodging. I like to use a uh, orb. Um, if somebody does get hit by the, the guy as he's jumping out here, we'll use a cheeky orb to sort of top them up like we do over here. Right, and then we're going straight in. This is the spooky part here. So get all our heals out, uh, get the essence structure out, the orb of the gate, drop the oblivion, then we're gonna roll back, uh, drink a mana potion here, hopefully, yeah, to get back to full mana. Now, what you're going to find is the walls will come down here, and this is the part where it gets really, really scary. The walls come down, and either the tank is going to taunt and get everything on them and then probably die, or the, the correct thing is the tank doesn't taunt, and instead everything goes to you. Now, you've got everything chasing after you. You're not going to stay, stay alive for very long, um, and it's better, what I find, is to pull things outside of the wall. So at this point, my idea is to heal everybody. We get aggro because we've thrown big heals in everybody. And then I'm going to run around the wall and just like run, you know, like a headless chicken. And hopefully my DPS can kill it on the inside. So we're going to put sacred ground on them real quick. Put the heals down. We get aggro of everything. We're going to pop all of our abilities here. So the uh, stone palm has popped and they cut it down. But yeah, we could have maybe kept that run going for like another 5 to 10 seconds there with uh, with good use of abilities. But thankfully, the DPS did burn it down in time. But it, I think that's a strategy that if you are going to go all in, be prepared to just run around like a headless chicken outside the walls because uh, the mobs are going to kill everybody if you don't do it. Next, like small little strategy to do here is to make sure that you pull the uh, Circes. Is that what it's called? Circes? I like to pull them with the life staff. Uh, sometimes the DPS will do it for you. But uh, since you have access to just, you know, ranged auto attacks, 
Uh, sometimes it's expected that you do the pulling for your melee DPS so then they can just ooga booga. And again, the usual strategy here of just throwing all of our heals down on them, trying to get the cooldowns up by just left clicking, apply the essence rupture, get that beacon back out as soon as it comes off a of cooldown, trying to dodge and uh, land the heavy attacks where we can if we have the luxury to do it to increase the healing. And, uh, you know, picking up our loot here as well. I think we actually might have missed that back there. But it's, it's nothing particularly too special. It's the fact that we have 250 to 300 to 350 points in focus means our heals are going to be pretty substantial. And then if we're using the dodge roll, we're using the intensify, uh, those heals, you know, with a, with a blast on the life staff, it's just that the heals are good enough that as long as your DPS stands in them and they, they dodge at the appropriate time, it's going to be good enough to keep everybody alive. Uh, just checking to figure out what my, my teammates were actually doing here because they were running a bit of a different strat. So uh, we'll talk about it a little bit when it comes up. Um, but sometimes, you know, just keep an eye on where everybody is. If somebody's, like, going to go pull aggro, do I need to be there to throw a heal at them? You never know when you... This is a public group, by the way. There's, I don't know these players. Um, so it was just a, a good old pug, as they call it. Put the beacon on the player there for the movement speed to get him, like, a whole five feet pro strategy there from, uh, <laughs> from me. <laughs> and then we're going to go in here uh, and try and put the sacred ground down between the two mobs. But I think we just applied it to the tank there. I think the best uh, play, though, is actually to put the sacred ground down sort of on the stairs. And then you can hover between the two enemies. Uh, we pop the stone form here while we're standing in the sacred ground. Stone form while you're in sacred ground is a huge amount of healing, by the way. So sometimes if you're under a bit of pressure, just standing in the sacred ground with all of your DPS with the stone form active is uh, probably one of the safest ways rather than just running around like a headless chicken. So what we're doing now is a, a slash stuck. So Amazon made a change a little while ago where when you do slash stuck... Um, it sends you back to the beginning of the dungeon. Now, I can't do Slash Stuck right now because I've got the debuff on me from Frenzied. Every time you dodge, you get that damage over time on you, but there it goes. So now we're going to type forward slash stuck, and then this sends you back to the entrance of the dungeon, which is usually a bit of a penalty, but it's actually not too bad right now because back to the entrance of the dungeon is actually pretty close to where we want to go to next. So uh, not my strategy here. These guys just said, like, type do uh, unstuck, and I was like, okay, we'll do unstuck, and uh, then we end up over here, and then we can just do a, a, a shop, right? So pretty cool strat. I uh, haven't seen people do this before, but maybe I'm just a potato. I did try to hit the uh, the torchbearer there with the beacon, but he swerved as it went. So I wanted to apply speed of light to the to the torchbearer there so he could get the movement speed. Um, but there was a quick dodge from me there. So we couldn't actually uh, <laughs> land it on them, unfortunately. Checking what's going on in here. Put the sacred ground down. I'm not sure if we're fighting these guys or if they just pulled them accidentally. Uh, it does look like, because the, you know, we, we at the end of the day, I think with the healer, just follow the tank. Unless your group tells you otherwise, just stay with the tank is basically the strat. Um, and the tank went down here, so I just followed them down as well. And then hopefully the, the DPS will follow suit. At this point, we're just waiting to de-aggro the, uh, the little dudes that came with us. Looks like they're still making their way down the stairs, which might be my fault, actually. So a little bit of a mistake there. I probably should have waited up on the ledge for a little bit longer. But it's fine. We got all of our heals. We got, we're doing the, uh, oh, almost did the uh, abilities in the right order there, but just did it. <laughs> for some reason decided to do uh, orb, then oblivion, rather than oblivion, then orb. Essence rupture onto the archer, orb of decay, my heals are coming back off cooldown, gonna stick the beacon. When you can, try and stick beacon to players or to mobs. Ideally, you stick the beacon to the player, because then the player can walk to other players. One of, the, one of the things about beacon that's a bit frustrating is it's a long cooldown, and if you miss it or you stick it to a piece of ground and then people move out, it's like a, it's a wasted heal. It's the same with sacred ground. Like, you can't... When sacred ground is down on the floor, if people get moved out of it, you know, if, if the fight moves somewhere else, it's not doing anything anymore. So you can hopefully avoid that with beacon by trying to fire beacon into your teammates whenever possible. Or failing that, just stick it to the boss enemy that everybody's fighting because you know that the melee is going to be staying next to the boss. So beacon placement sometimes is important. Just trip, typically you want to try and avoid sticking it to the ground. Stick it to a player or stick it to an enemy because then at least it can move around a little bit and be a bit more dynamic. Just going for the classic rotation here. We put the sacred ground down. Essence rupture. Orb of decay going in. Oblivion is out. Uh, I'm going to back off a little bit. What I try and do sometimes as well is position my character uh, sort of behind the DPS. Because every time we fire a light attack, when light attacks travel through your friendlies, it will heal them. Provided you have the Blissful Touch passive, which is on the left-hand side of the skill tree. So um, whenever you fire a light attack through them, it heals them for, I want to say it's 16% weapon damage. Check it real quick. Yeah, light attacks now heal for 16% weapon damage when passing through an ally. So if you can be behind your melee DPS... 
and fire those light attacks through them, it's actually some pretty substantial healing. It's uh, similar to the amount of healing that Beacon would provide, so uh, maybe something that, like, some healers sleep on. But uh, don't, you know, don't disrespect the power of the uh, the good old left click. So we did have one DPS player go down there, but it's fine. Um, you know, one thing to bear in mind uh, as a healer is sometimes people are going to go down. Sometimes people are going to die. Uh, it's not always your fault. Sometimes people just didn't dodge at the right time. Uh, there is, you know, this is the risk that you run when you play a 5 or 50 constitution build that if you misplay even for a second, even with all the heals in the world, you could be healing somebody for like 20,000 health per second. But if they take 10,000 health in half a second from like one instant attack, that's it. They're dead. So final boss fight here. There are, again, a few more responsibilities as a healer that you need to pay attention to. So I'm typically trying to stay at range whenever I can. Um, the Blighted Greenskeeper does have some mechanics that punish uh, players that are at range. They're not punished, but specifically interact with players that are at range. And we're going to see one of those shortly. Um, it's basically like the, the Poison Goose Scream or whatever. So not that. That is just aimed at the tank. Uh, but right now, we're just doing this classic stuff where we rotate through our abilities. Uh, but we're probably going to get her to use it soon. Either that or she's going to phase and just pop down. Yeah, so this is the mechanic here. It typically chooses the player that's furthest away. And she screams at you, and you get this sort of circle, and then you apply goo wherever you are. Now, one thing that's very, very important here is you do not drop this on the boss. If you put this next to the boss, you're ruining it. <laughs> you're ruining uh, things for your melee DPS. So make sure that whenever she's doing that beam at you, that you run far away from your melee DPS, ideally to the corner of the room. But just whatever you do, don't drop that on the boss, because it's really going to mess things up. Now, another strategy here that maybe uh, if you're newer to Garden of Genesis you haven't seen before is basically to keep everybody... Uh, pressed up together in a small area and just hold down block and slowly walk backwards So by holding down block and slowly walking backwards She doesn't have to travel very far because she basically just travels from one player to another to another But if all of the players are right next to each other, she just up and down up and down She just you know like a like a whack-a-mole So just hold down block slowly stay together like this the reason why we hold down block is if she just coming out of the ground and hits you, um, either it's not going to hit you or it will hit your block and, and you won't get one shot. So we're using the block there just as a safety measure rather than because if we don't block and she hits you, it's like a one shot as we saw with our player there. Unfortunately, um, as for went down, nothing we could do about that. It's just uh, you run the risk. So this is another mechanic that does target uh, range players. Now, we were actually closer in melee range here than our tank apparently. So our tank went out there. Um, but the player that's furthest away, she drops a ball on them as well. So this is something that is also going to be important for you as a healer is to be aware of your positioning and you get control of the balls. So you want to make sure that you put the balls reasonably close to it. You don't want to be standing all the way on the other side of the room. So stand at probably the distance I am now and make sure that you don't drop the um, the puddle of poison on top of the balls The because then your melee will have to run around it for the mechanic that comes up. And if you put the poison next to the boulders, uh, it's it's gonna be a bad time. So we'll, we'll get to see a little bit of that soon But you can see the tank did a pretty good job there. Just ran it off to the side um, We pop a sacred ground on them because I'm bad. I should have just put that sacred ground on the melee DPS But there's the ball there. It's a reasonable range You know that people can go to that one. They also have the other ball that's right next to them as well Now we're bringing that uh, sort of poison uh, Field there and making sure we don't place that on the boulder because if we place that on the boulder and then we have to run to behind that boulder to avoid the mechanic That's gonna be pretty bad because everybody's gonna be standing in the poison and uh, the run is probably going to be over because uh, maybe with Sacred Ground, Beacon Orb, you could outheal it, but probably not. So we just get these mobs down real quick here as well. Now, these mobs do apply a Fortify to themselves, so you can strip it away with Nullifying Oblivion, but they died before they even get a chance to do it. Doing the classic strat here of blocking and walking backwards slowly, so she doesn't have to travel too far, so we can get through this section of the fight faster. And she's going to come up now. Put all the heals down. Put the Oblivion down to give them a DPS boost, and then just get the heck out of there. Uh, you can, like, get cheeky and try and go... Uh, we probably could have got, like, one or two more attacks in there, but it's not worth dying for. Sometimes what you will see as a healer is uh, players with hatchets will stay in. Um, the hatchet players choose to stay in uh, because they have Defy Death, and it, it means they won't die because uh, it would, like, that. that is supposed to be a one-shot mechanic, but Defy Death, which is the ultimate on the left-hand side of the hatchet tree, says, I'm not going to die. Uh, so sometimes you might see your hatchet players stay in just to do some extra DPS. If that's going to be the case, just prepare. Make sure that you've got, like, all the protection to take advantage of that big healing boost or have a heal, something ready to go um, if it does look like they're going to go in because they're going to need a, a top-up pretty qu quickly after, you know, that uh, explosion goes out. So just the standard stuff here. We got the... Uh we got the, the puddle, but I know that she's going to do the ball on me shortly afterwards, so I try not to go too far back. I Honestly, that's still probably like 
could have done with that being a little bit closer, but there's not much we can do because she times one straight after the other. So we're going to get it again here. Now, what I should try and do is roll forward immediately so the next ball is like placed around there. But that is the uh, end of the dungeon. We killed her in time and uh, we get the GG's. So if I'm not mistaken, this was a gold run with a reasonably high score. It wasn't like the best run. You know, it's it's not the, the highest score. It's not top of the leaderboards. It's not the fastest run, but it is a pretty good run. Uh, again, I w will admit that we could have done some better secret ground placement there. We could have gone in with Void Blade as well. But hopefully this guy is, this gives you guys a little bit of like a run through of what is going on from a healer perspective and how a lot of it is basically just make sure you keep your abilities on cooldown. Dodge when you can to get the Ben Light bonus. Intensify when you can to get a little bit extra healing. Uh, Svix says bad there. <laughs> I thought, you know, it was, a, it was a fairly decent run. So, yeah, if you guys find this video is useful or if you'd like me to, like, take more time to break it down, uh, let me know in the comments down below. We are going to do another video for Tempest Heart as well. So if you guys want to see the other mutation that is available this week, we are going to do one for Tempest Heart. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. Like the video if you like the video. And I'll catch you guys all in the next one.